It was Washington, D.C. and not Wall Street that was the nation's economic center today. First of all, the House and Senate appear to have reached a consensus on the nearly $800 billion stimulus bill pushed by President Obama, and it could be ready for him to sign into law within days. But that consensus comes as Congress also investigates what happened to the hundreds of billions of dollars in bailout money that's been given to the banks. The bailout plan is known as TARP, the Troubled Asset Relief Program. When Congress approved the $700 billion rescue bill, the expectation was that it would stimulate banks to thaw out credit markets and start lending again. What we're learning now is that no one knows how the funds are being used. One revelation is that the government paid $78 billion more for bank assets than they're worth. Taxpayers frankly need to be outraged because Treasury needs the message loud and clear. And the message is, you tell us the truth. You describe what it is that you're doing, and then we can participate in that decision-making process. Today, eight CEOs from America's leading banks were questioned before the House Financial Services Committee, where they admitted the transparency in the use of the public money hasn't been what it should be. We understand that taxpayers are angry and they deserve to know how their funds are being used. Citigroup CEO apologized for trying to buy a $50 million dollar private jet I with the government the reality, bailout. And I, we did not adjust quickly enough to this new world, and I take personal responsibility for that mistake. In the end, I canceled delivery. We need to do a better job of acknowledging and embracing the new realities. None of us. But congressmen say constituents are angry over the bailout and that anger spilled over into today's hearing. You come to us today on your bicycles after buying Girl Scout cookies and helping out Mother Teresa, telling us we're sorry, we didn't mean it, we won't do it again, trust us. Well, I have some people in my constituency that actually robbed some of your banks, and they say the same thing. They're sorry, they didn't mean it, they won't do it again. Just let them out. Do you understand that this is a little difficult for most of my constituents to take? That you learned your lesson? Yesterday, new Treasury Secretary Timothy Geithner revealed the Obama administration TARP plan. Without giving many details, Geithner said the rescue of America's economy will cost trillions of dollars. This new financial stability plan will take a comprehensive approach. The Department of the Treasury, the Federal Reserve, the FDIC, and all the financial agencies in our country will bring the full force of the United States government to bear to strengthen our financial system so that we get the economy back on track. Joining us now to explain where we are in the bailout of the nation's financial sector are Martin Eichenbaum, professor of economics at Northwestern University and a senior consultant at the Federal Reserve Bank of Chicago. And Rebel Cole, professor of e economics at DePaul University, and he was a staff economist at the Federal Reserve Board during the savings and loan crisis of the late, late 1980s. Welcome, gentlemen. Professor Eichenbaum, first of all, I mentioned a little bit of what the TARP funds were designed to do, but specifically, what was the idea behind it? The objective uh, was to ameliorate the large, uh, long, deep contraction in lending that many people felt was presumed to be the inevitable consequence of massive mortgage-related losses in the U.S. banking system. The method was to buy $700 billion of so-called troubled assets. By that they meant non-liquid, difficult-to-value assets um, uh, held by the banks and other financial intermediaries. These were the mortgages that had gone bad, is that correct for the most part? Uh, mortgages, but also a variety of derivative assets whose value is backed by those mortgages in more or less very complicated and circuitous ways. So, Professor Cole, at the time we were told that if this did not pass, the, the economy, uh, the U.S. economy was going to crater, as John McCain famously said. Was that true? And then what happened after those, the, those funds were uh, allocated? We were told the stock market would drop 2,000 points if we didn't pass this act immediately. and We needed to have the $700 billion immediately. And when the act did not pass, the stock market dropped about 800 points. But later in the week when it passed, it dropped another 800 points. And since then, it has dropped those 2,000 points. So the, the jury is still out on whether it accomplished what it needed to do in stabilizing the banking system or if it just prolonged the inevitable. But when it was uh, finally given to uh, the Treasury to, to handle, Secretary Paulson had a change of heart along the way. 
Well, he found out that it's a lot more difficult to spend the $700 billion on buying troubled assets than he thought. Uh, the original plan was to do a series of reverse, more, uh, reverse auctions to, sell, sell these, to buy these securities. Uh, the problem was in the details. And uh, they simply didn't have the ability to uh, uh, implement these auctions. It was simply too difficult to price these auctions. There's simply th thousands of tranches of these securities. And, it, they, and it, eventually they gave up and they decided to t take plan B, and that was to follow the uh, Bank of England, which decided to inject capital by preferred stock, by purchasing preferred stocks, which was the ultimate plan that we saw for about $250 billion capital injection in the U.S. banking system. Professor Eichenbaum, as we saw, the, uh, the nation's top eight uh, bank CEOs were before Congress very contrite that uh, things were not more transparent and that they explained what they were doing with the money that they were given. Is there any indication that the, the first half of that $700 billion uh, did anything except perhaps uh, prevent the economy from uh, cratering. Well, I think that's a very important point. How should we judge in the short run the success of the TARP program? I think it's too much to expect of the TARP program, 350 billion, uh, to resuscitate an economy in which there was a housing collapse, uh, in which stock market uh, wealth dissipated. If nothing had happened to the financial sector, we would have been in a very serious recession. Preventing the financial sector from um, further cratering, uh, Senator McCain put it, uh, is, is critical. We were facing potentially systemic uh, failure. And uh, this Band-Aid, almost if you like, was applied to or uh, to stop the, the flow of blood. It is important to note that there were technical problems initially with TARP, but there's a conceptual problem. What the government wanted to do was buy these troubled assets. If they paid fair market value, they weren't going to help them. Because, but they could have gotten market value for them. The problem was the market said it's not worth very much. So the question was, the market right? Was the market wrong? If they were really broke, you had to, by definition, pay them more than they were worth. Otherwise, how are you helping them? The problem with that is, you're bailing out the stockholders in all these banks. So then they said, wait, that doesn't seem so nice. So the alternative was to issue sort of complicated warrants, which basically said that these corporations, these banks, would be paying very large percentage uh, return to the, uh, to, to the government. But the problem with that is, if that's true and they're troubled, why would private money come in and try and help these guys and resuscitate the whole sector? So you have this very difficult political problem. Do you bail out the equity holders? That seems awful. But if you don't do that, how do you get private money back in? Third alternative is to roll the dice and say, let them, let them just go to under. So, Professor Cole, the, I guess it raises the question, there's a lot of variables in this, and, and, and uh, no one really seems to know what the one answer is. Is there one answer? Is, or is this just a, a shot in the dark of in, in injecting money into the financial um, uh, markets? Well, I question whether we have enough money to inject into the, the uh, financial markets to, to uh, uh, deal with these troubled assets. There's literally tens of trillions of dollars of these complicated alphabet soup, CDS, CDOs, and et cetera. And w there, I just don't think we have enough money to deal with that. I think the solution is to look beyond those assets at the true toxic assets, which are the delinquent mortgages that are floating around in our financial system. These securities are simply used to leverage the gains or in what we see now, the losses on these securities. So if we could deal with the underlying problem of the delinquent mortgages and foreclosed mortgages, then I think we could make some headway in this process. Now, TARP Part 2, as it's being called, was unveiled yesterday. This is uh, the Obama administration. Secretary of the Treasury Geithner unveiled uh, this, this plan. At its core, and I know it's very complex, Professor Cole, tell us what the intention is here and how they will ad ad uh, address the, the problem. Well, it is very complex, but there, I guess there's sort of three or four key pieces. The first key piece is to inject more capital into the banking system. And that they said they were going to do a, a comprehensive stress test of each bank uh, to see if they are viable. Uh, but the problem with that is the banks they really in, want to inject the capital in the most are the ones that probably aren't viable, the city banks of the world. Uh, if you remember back to TARP 1, uh, when uh, the Paulson took the nine CEOs into a, a room and, uh, in the, and basically said, you will take this money, uh, the chairman of Wells Fargo said, we don't really need this money. So 
is it well spent to give it to banks that are healthy, or is it better to spend this money to recapitalize the really bad banks, or uh, do we simply need to revert to a tried and true model that worked back in the 1990s, the RTC, and simply take over these banks, clean out the bad assets, and then sell them off to private investors? Professor Eichenbaum, one of the parts, and, and as I mentioned, it was not very well received, and it received a lot of criticism. And the, one of the aspects of this plan that uh, apparently analysts were most disappointed in was the creation of an aggregator fund or bad bank. Explain to us what that is and why it's necessary. Well, I think essentially the idea is to have a partnership to, uh, between the private and the public sector, basically the public sector subsidizing various unnamed people in the private sector, to go in and buy the bad assets. The idea is if you can buy off those bad assets, you ne at least know that the bank that you're dealing with, the financial institution that you're dealing with is solvent, um, and you can sort of get that bad stuff off the, the books and we can move forward. The problem is there's just no details. So how is it that we're going to use a hundred billion dollars to somehow rescue a trillion dollars worth of assets? How, what's the hook here? What's the nature of the partnership? I think Wall Street's reacting to saying, guys, you, you know, when you're ready for prime time, call us. But why when are you have details? Yeah, we have details. Otherwise, we can't react. Well, in the one minute that we have left, give us your take on, on what's going to happen here. Is this a bad omen that it was so badly received and criticized? I don't think it's been well thought out. And having said that, uh, I have enormous respect for various people working in the Obama administration. These are some of the finest and the, and the brightest. But this seems like communication before substance. And... That's just not going to work. These problems are too severe. Professor Cole, your take on this. I agree. That there's too many wills in this plan. We will do this. We will do that. There's, there's no there there. There's no real plan. They do need to actually come up with it. They should have had a plan before they came out. The one uh, sort of glimmer of hope I see in there is there is $50 billion supposedly for foreclosure mitigation. I think that that's a road they need to look at uh, more closely. And my thanks to both of you, Professor Martin Eichenbaum and Rebel Cole. And Chicago Tonight